guys welcome to another episode of faith story series i am cozy and i am back again with another guest another gist another amazing story that will leave your jaws wide open if you're not careful so why wait for our guests if it's your first time here just go down hit on the subscribe button it doesn't bite hit on the notification bell so you automatically join this crew we'll be back shortly I am back with our guest for this video, Sister Sharon. Meet the crib, crib meet Sister Sharon. It's nice having you. Thank you for coming around. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here also. Well, yes. So, Sister Sharon here is um is actually here. Sister Sharon here is actually here. Yeah. So tell us a story about herself. Not just herself, but it's not like a biography or something. But she has been through something in life that I cannot even imagine myself going through it, if you know what I mean. So, Sister Sharon here, she told the story some time ago, and I was privileged to be there when she told that story. I think it was at the Divine Connection Crusade um, in June when Pastor Kumi came to Abuja. That crusade was, I think, 24th to 29th, Divine Connection. So, so on the Saturday night, when she gave that testimony, I was just there sitting. When she came on stage, I was like, okay, this is somebody I know. And then she started talking, guys, you will not believe. Oh, no, 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 no. I was like, I can't be the only one listening to this story right now. Somebody else has to. Not just somebody else, everybody. In fact, outside the different life community have to listen to this story. And that's why I have successfully brought her here to you guys to tell her story. So today, Sister Sharon will be telling us her story. And I don't know if you're ready for this. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> she's ready. Yeah, she's ready. So um, tell us about what happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was actually one faithful Sunday evening. Okay. I was going to my auntie's house. Okay. And then... I just stopped by the road. I was trying to stop cab, like okay. take me to yeah. Bogolada precisely. Okay. So from where? From Kibi. Okay, so Bogolada. Yes. Okay. So and then a vehicle stopped in front of me. Two guys sitting in front, playing this gospel music, dressed mm. in you know this churchy way. And I'm wow. like, okay now. <laughs> just so the two of them. Just the two of them. Wow. So I entered inside and then we moved a little. And then another lady entered inside. Okay. okay. And then all of a sudden we were supposed to go like forward. Hmm. And then they took a U-turn. Wow. And then me and the lady inside we were like, uh, okay, where are you going to? Where are you taking us to? Wow. Like we say we are going to Gawalada and you are taking us somewhere else. Hmm. Before you know, the other guy that was sitting in the front together with the driver hmm. jumped to the back with a gun. Wow. Pointing to like both of us and was like threatening us that if we shout he's going to shoot or something like that. So mm -hmm. I was scared though. Like I was like good. Mm -hmm. And then he told us to bend down. Mm -hmm. And I bent down and I was crying, I was praying because I was scared, but that was the only thing I could do at that time. That was the only thing I my like yes, to pray. To pray. And the other lady was shouting and screaming and she was like, leave me alone. Um, the daughter of choosing. Mm. I, I'm like, I was like scared, and <laughs> all of a sudden, calling the gun. Yes. Yeah, so, I can imagine. Um, then he blindfolded her eyes with a, a blindfold, like a cover, and we're moving. All of a sudden, I don't even know where we're going to. Mm. All of a sudden, the vehicle stopped, and then we came down. They pushed us into an uncompleted building. I don't know. It's it's not really uncompleted, but it's a building where entry bars and the 
rest materials used for painting were so were there and they say we should bend down and we sat down in fact i was really thinking of how my parents would be feeling like oh lord and then we were asked to sit and then we sat on the floor and the other lady she was proving stubborn like she was like i want to go home we should leave me alone i want to go home i want to go to my parents place like she was shouting and screaming and she was provoking them so they felt like she's going to be like should i say she's going to cause like a nuisance or something or people them. around around my like, yeah, yeah, yeah or something because she was shouting yes yes exactly mm. so um they they stabbed her with a knife not just once all over like all over her body they were just stabbing her knife and blood was gushing out i could just like hear the sound of the stab like the way they were stabbing her, i was hearing the sound if I even take a look, like a glimpse of what they are doing, I was scared. So, when they were done stabbing her, she fell on the floor and they started moving close to me. I could see the knife in their hand and blood dropping from the knife and they were coming close to me. And the only thing I could see then was, God, this is not the plan you have for me. Like, this is not the plan you have for me. And I was praying and I was like, God, please have mercy, please, I'm sorry, please, and I was praying and mm-hmm. all of that. All of a sudden, they stopped as if they were being controlled, mm-hmm. and they left the room. Wow. Like, together, they turned together, left the room as if they were being wounded, mm-hmm. and then they left. But they were, like, actually coming to you before. They were coming to me, and later they stopped, yeah, and they went they away. And they went away. They went out of the room and closed the door. And my breathing and my body was good, good bones everywhere. Mm-hmm. So later and later, I, I was scared, but I don't know where I took that courage from. Mm-hmm. I went close to the lady. I could not touch her because you know, she was everywhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, what would I do? I cannot take her to the hospital at that point. <laughs> you have been kidnapped. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I, you have been locked up. So <laughs> I. I told her that the only thing I could do. Okay, she was still like awake. Yeah, like she, she was still alive. alive. She was still alive. Almost died though. So the only thing I could do, I told her, I said I could only lead her to Christ because that's the only way. Because mm-hmm. the way she was dressed, she was dressed half naked, mm-hmm. and I don't think it's, she's someone who is born again though. Yeah. So, and then I told her that she should repeat after me. She was not able to talk. But I say, since you cannot talk, just nod your head at me so that we know you are. Or say it in your mind. Say it in your mind or something. Yeah. And then I, I prayed for her. She repeated after me. Mm. I knew in my heart that yes, she received Christ. And mm. she shook her head. Then she died. She died. I went back to, like, I crawled back to where I was before. And I bent my head and I was like, God. I was thinking of mom dad my siblings everybody around me like i was just thinking of everything all of a sudden a few minutes later they came back inside with a plate of food and water with like food and water okay they were serving you they were serving me so you're not gonna die in my mind i was like okay so maybe this is the way they want to poison maybe they want to poison me and kill, kill me, you something like that that's my own way of dying actually i didn't eat the food i didn't even take the water i just pushed it one side and I slept with the dead body till daybreak. Shit. I didn't actually sleep. My eyes were wide open. Until so daybreak, she daybreak. I was just praying and saying, God, please, mercy. Like, I cannot just die like this. Hmm. So, and then, it was still early. Like, the day just broke and they came inside. Hmm. They tied my eyes and then they moved outside. And they were inside the vehicle. They were moving. Hmm. All of a sudden, the vehicle slow down a bit and they threw something out of the vehicle which I think is the lady's body oh. and then dispose of yes she yes. threw her out yeah. of the car and we are moving and immediately they removed my blindfold and told me to get down and it was around that super side that I don't I don't really know that side well but it was around that super side and then they told me to come down like they literally opened the door for me to come down hmm. and then gave me the 1,000 naira they collected for me last night. Oh, wow. They gave me the 1,000 naira and they told me to go. They did it. 
like when wow. I see they are still there for almost like 15 to 20 minutes because I was Definitely. shocked like, wow, I was just when... thinking about everything that happened last night how the other like, lady was killed and everything so that was how everything happened wow imagine you sitting down somebody is being killed right in front of you not just killed stabbed to death and you are meant to sit down with a dead body overnight until the following morning wow that's that's serious like i cannot even imagine see i've listened to this story before actually when she gave the testimony at that program but right now listening to the story like there is this feeling all over again um I'm, I'm like somebody beside me like i'm sort like flesh and blood went through this like i cannot imagine what would you do if you are in such a situation the only thing that came to her mind like you heard her was prayer she was just praying right just praying what kind of prayer point did you even pray at that point god forgive me all my sins god wash me with your blood <laughs> god write my name in the book of life god when i die i want to see you god what will you pray Wow, congratulate let me congratulate you. Thank you. Congratulate us for life. Like this is her sitting beside me and Lord we are grateful. God is really amazing. So from this story, this experience, because it's not just a story to you now. Yes. It's an experience you will never forget. That like you tell your never. children and <laughs> your children's children. Like, how was it healing from the trauma? Because Honestly, let's be honest, we are human beings and you're even a lady. I'm sure that was a really traumatizing for you. How was it coming out of that trauma? Like, how did you manage to? Because if not that I heard you tell that story in church, I have been seeing you like few days to that program for being together, you know. I never even imagined that something like this happened to you. Because you would smile, you would greet, you know. It was just so like this girl is enjoying life with, like nothing nothing <laughs> happened but then hearing that story i was like are you serious you went through this recently and i it never you know occurred to us looking at you because it's you know it's, it's never visible on your face i'm not saying you should wear it around your face like hey i was kidnapped and somebody like with me but then how are you able to come out of it well i went through a lot actually definitely daydream hmm. nightmares oh lord like it was scary. Mm. Even going out in the night to use myself was hard because the thought of everything that happened that yeah. day was just kept haunting yeah. us. Like I was, I was just there. Mm. So, but actually, my GC, my prayer coordinator, they prayed for me. And in fact, I myself, I prayed. Like I was just praying because I could not be it. Mm. Everything was just there in yeah, my head. head. Like I was just picturing everything. If I sleep, the next thing that will come to my brain, like it was, it was just the picture of the girl how she was being killed. Everything. Mm. So it was just prayers, true prayers. Everything just it was just as if everything God just took everything, all the body, and all the pictures, and everything. Even if I think about it, it's not, it's, it's not like it's not hurting me that mm. much. Just like before. before so. Um, if you were to come face to face with your abductors, people who abducted you, yeah. who kidnapped you, if you were to come face to face with them, and you are given an opportunity to say something to them, what would that be? Bearing in mind, they kidnapped you, they kept you awake for a whole night, they killed a girl right beside you, and left you to stay with the dead body overnight. But they released you at the end, and gave you transport money. You know, it's kind of like a mixed feeling. Yeah. Thank you, my kidnappers, for releasing me. <laughs> but then you killed somebody and you dumped her body. You know, it's kind of... Yes. How do you feel and if you are to come like face to face with those people, what do you think you would be able to say to them if you have to have the opportunity to? Well, I really don't know what. <laughs> if I'm to have an opportunity to like see them face to face. Yeah. I would first want them to know about Christ. Wow. Yes. I know that they've done something brutal, something big, like 
them <laughs> really <laughs> bad <laughs> really bad oh my god yeah i can yes. feel it i can feel it really bad yeah. so i would love to lead them to christ mm. first of all looks like your mission is just to be leading people to christ <laughs> because that lady was dying oh lord it's not funny i shouldn't be yes but then yes. it's okay to smile because she gave her life to christ and we are just hoping and believing that that lady is in heaven right now but then the lady was dying beside you. The next thing that came to your mind, lead us to Christ. What would you say to your kidnappers? I'll lead them to Christ. <laughs> really? <laughs> Looks yeah. like you're an evangelist or something. By the grace of God. By the grace of God. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so I would love to lead them to Christ. I would love to like let them know mm-hmm. about this Christ that I'm serving. Okay. Because there is more joy in having Him yeah. than having the whole world. Yeah. So I would love to lead them to Christ and also love to because after leading them to Christ I will tell them of how um you know living a life in Christ would be like because once you're in Christ you will not be thinking about kidnapping other people. people you won't be thinking about killing other people yeah rather you'll be thinking of working for Christ, Christ. Thinking of living for him and, and you thinking of the mind of Christ. Yes. And the mind of Christ doesn't hurt people. It doesn't hurt people. Thank yeah. you. So that's that's what I can You think. know, now that I think about it, I'm still wondering what exactly was their mission? Because they kidnapped two people, mm-hmm. killed one. Okay, what if the girl didn't even shout? Or she did not even make noise. And she was as quiet as you were, just praying. What? was on their mind like what were they thinking what did they want to use the people for they killed one the doctor have already released the one like i would say the girl they just wasted her yeah did you get they just wasted her and okay i'm sure like you said if they are in christ no they would not think of hurting people so they wouldn't they would not think of hurting people so from your experience the whole experience you coming out of this trauma and you sitting here close to me from the whole experience what lessons did you learn from your own experience well i learned before i say that though, yeah. i'd love to say something okay i thought about everything all the scenario that happened and i kept thinking and thinking just like you said what happened like what led them to kidnap like two of us and then they released me so i kept thinking and i didn't actually come to a conclusion but what was in my mind was that was that actually they really didn't want me they wanted her okay like should i say i was just there to lead her to christ okay that was what i felt maybe wow. god just wanted me to be there, be there to lead her to christ yeah. that was just the mission god gave me to do like that was what he wow. wanted me to do wow. i thought about it God wanted me to just be there to lead her to Christ before she died. Yes. Maybe she had been hearing the word, yeah. been preaching to her, mm. and she refused to give her life to Christ. Mm. So God wanted it to be okay before she died. God wanted her soul to come to him like God wanted her soul actually. Yeah. So God used me to reach out to her before she died. That's what I felt though. Wow. So um the lessons I learned actually is um for just imagine I, I'm not born again. Mm-hmm. Just imagine I, I was living a wayward life before mm-hmm. being kidnapped. You know, maybe I might be dead by now. Yeah. Am I still like <sighs> maybe <laughs> I can't even explain God. Yeah, I, <laughs> I get you. I get you. So should I say well, once you have Christ, once you're born again, yeah. all those things that are happening, the kidnap and the rest, if it is your time to die. You will die. That's if God said this is your time, you will definitely die. But if it is not your time, yeah. then it is not your time. Mm. So the lesson I learned here is, as a Christian, as a born again Christian, mm. once you've dedicated yourself to Christ, once you have this faith, once you have this faith in you, yeah. you cannot be scared of anything. Even when I was scared, I was still praying. Yeah. Because I knew that God cannot just leave me alone. Like that. He has always protected me yeah. since from day one, since when I was giving birth to this yeah. world. Why so would he leave you at this time? He cannot leave me. So that's the lesson that I learned. Okay. okay. Um the first lesson you actually shared got my attention. That's um 
God wanted you to be there to preach to her at that time so she could give her life to God because God was interested in her soul. That's actually to tell us that there are some situations in life that you can find yourself and it's not like that situation is actually coming for you directly but it could be that God is placing you there because he wants to save somebody else. Do you understand? Yeah. So that's why I think that's that's like I said that on that Rema. That's that's something new that I just thought of. And um if I'm to share my own lessons from her experience, I think my own lesson would be it's very very practical. Let's be practical here. Okay. See for them to I don't know how they plan to do it before, what was in, on their mind or whatever, but just for my own reasoning, this is what I came up with. If this other lady, that's the dead lady now, yeah, so rest in peace. If the dead lady had maybe been a little quiet or maybe just prayed instead of shouting, I am a choosing or whatever she was shouting, I want to go home. When you are in such a situation where people have people are armed with weapons to hurt you, you know they can actually take your life at that time. You've seen gone already. That's enough. If they say keep quiet, you keep quiet. Like she was actually kind of they have been aggressive and she's been aggressive back to them. And that's why they got angry and decided to stab her to death. So I don't what me I'm thinking but that if she has been a little more quiet, like a little bit more reserved, maybe just praying and just trusting God like you did. Maybe they wouldn't have been forced to react to her the way they reacted by killing her. So what I just learned from this is you know I was just asking myself that if I if I was the one in that situation, what would I have done? Would I react the way the other lady reacted or just be quiet and pray? But then, our uh, sister, thank God, God gave you the wisdom, you know, the wisdom to just maintain. You know that Bible passage that says, be still and know that I am God. That be still. When you're in situations like that, I learned that you have to be still. Just to be patient. You don't have to shout. Because when you shout, it causes more harm than what is already going on. So I think with this, I just want to appreciate you because it took a lot of courage for you to come here and then share this experience. I'm sure you sharing this is making you kind of relieve the experience, bringing everything back to your memory. Psychologically, I would say that's not so good. But it's still okay because you get to encourage people out there. You get to lift up the faith of somebody. You get to help people out there to see that you have to carry Jesus on your head everywhere you go. Yes! Jesus has to be on your head everywhere you go. When you're in trouble, what's the first thing you do? Mommy, oh, daddy, oh, you know, something else. They will, they don't know. The first thing to call is Jesus. The first thing to call is God because he's the only one that can help you. So, with this, I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope we've been able to lift up the feet of somebody out there. I hope that somebody's life has been transformed through this video. I don't know if you're there and you also have a life experience that you would love to share to lift up the story of all that you can actually chat us up directly like on whatsapp check us out on facebook i'll drop the description link at the description box so thank you guys it's a wrap for today see you on our next video Bye.